soon I'm going to be putting together this, what should we say, uh, fun cub. It looks very, very similar to the multiplex fun cub. It's a little bit smaller, it's a 1.1 metre. To get it in the air, as always, we're going to need motors and servos and speed controls and all that good stuff. And when I was looking around, I managed to find this bundle. In the bundle, we have this 2217 1250 kV motor. Comes with the prop adapter and the mount and nice bullet connectors on there. Also, the speed controller we can see here a 40 amp up to 4S LiPo with a 3 amp Beck. It has two 8060 size props, a battery strap, two El Cheapo servos. And here is just the mounting hardware for the propeller. A very good selection then, provided that everything works okay. And a complete bargain at under 20 euros. But can it be any good? Let's check the main components, the speed controller and the motor, and see how they perform. Here you can see my super sophisticated test rig, botched out of an old set of digital scales. and. Uh, I'll, I'll link to uh, the video where I made this creation. It may not give us accurate numbers, but the important thing as far as I'm concerned is that it gives us a way to compare different configurations quickly. Just to remind you then, our motor, the 1250kV there, as the motor spins up it will be exerting a force that we can measure on the little readout there. I have in line my wattmeter to be able to record the current and the wattage. The battery I intend to use then is this 1800 milliampere hour 30 to 60 C battery and that's been fully charged. I'll make a note of the values and let's crack on. And of course, safety squints on. I saw there, I think, 880 grams force. The wattmeter shows 20.55 amps, 238 watts. As a comparison then, let's change the props for one of these two. The first one will be going down from 8.6 to 8.4, so just changing the pitch there, and then we'll try a 7x4 and see what numbers we get. Next then the 8x4. Seven hundred and fifty, I think. Again on the watt meter here, sixteen oh six amps, one hundred and eighty eight watts. Finally, then our seven by four. Six hundred and twenty, eleven point one nine amps, which then should be the propeller of choice for our little mini fun cub. Let's take a look at the numbers. What can we conclude then from our tests? Which is the best propeller for our new project? Let's then look at the numbers that we recorded. I'd be interested to know, and please leave comments below, whether you go through this type of process or whether you think I'm overly anally retentive. I do remember a story from Eric Brown, uh, so-called Winkle Brown, the famous test pilot who flew more aircraft types than anybody else in history. He was always one for reading all of the pilot's notes and doing things properly and, and by the book. He was rather scornful of pilots whose attitude was light the fires, kick the tires, and the last man homes a sissy. Anyway, moving on. The estimated flying weight of, of the plane is going to be 750 grams. Obviously, we can modify that after the build if there's any great change. Assuming that that's correct, uh, a typical trainer needs between 0.5 and 0.8 times the flying weight of thrust to fly well. That gives us figures between 375 grams and 600 grams of thrust. Clearly, then, the supplied prop is uh, somewhat of overkill at 880 grams and would also consume some 20 amps. 
8 by 4 is 1 to 1. That would be uh, overkill as well, I feel. The decision that you make here is really based upon your intended flying style, I guess. For me, as a novice, I'm more interested in flight time so that I can practice, and uh, boy, do I need it. My choice then is going to be going for this 7x4 prop, providing 620 grams, which is still more than adequate for the typical trainer, and that will only consume some 11 amps, should give us a reasonable flying time. Clearly, theory is all very well and good. Until we get the plane built and up in the air, we won't really know, but it will be interested to revisit this once we've got it flying. Thanks for watching.